Hey, I'm Chris Epp from Make Everything, and today we are making a little knife shop to make a small utility knife using only tools from Harbor Freight that's going to run you about $100. Check it out. So the concept behind this project um, is similar to a very popular beginning knife making book called The $50 Knife Shop. And now The $50 Knife Shop is one of the first books that I got when I started knife making. And it's a really great resource for sort of getting your hands dirty and learning how you can make knives on a budget. My only issue with that book is that it talks a lot about getting things from scrap yards and buying secondhand equipment and motors and stuff like that, which is great, but a lot of times it's very difficult to do depending on where you are. Like for me to get access to a scrap yard to buy a secondhand motor is actually really difficult. So what I wanna do here is I wanna use all brand new stuff, stuff that anybody can either go to a store like Harbor Freight or order online and get started into knife making without breaking the bank, without having to buy tons of equipment and uh, sort of just get the feeling of making their first knife and then sort of figure it out from there and figure out if you want to invest in the grinders and all the other, all the other tools. So. Let's get right into it, and uh, I'm gonna show you what I got. Okay, so for tooling, here's what we're looking at to make this knife. Now we've got a four and a half inch angle grinder, we've got a drill, a dolly, and the only reason we bought the dolly is because I need something to use for scales, and these dollies are made out of maple. Got two four inch clamps, some safety glasses, which are always a necessity, a pair of pliers. This is a seven and a quarter inch blade for a circular saw, and we're gonna use this actually as our knife steel, and this is something that's mentioned in the $50 Knife Shop book, that um, old saw blades make a great beginner knife steel. It's very easy to heat treat. We've got an assortment of grinding discs to cut out the knife, profile it, and then sand it back. Some sandpaper that we'll use to kind of finish it up and make it look nice. A file, a hammer, some epoxy, a magnet for when we heat treat, some drill bits to drill through the steel for the pins, and then some wooden dowels that we're actually going to use as handle pins. When we're all done, we're going to use this little handheld knife sharpener to put an edge on it. The only thing that you're not able to get from Harbor Freight is some oil. Now, I like to do my tool steel quenching in vegetable oil, which can be bought from a supermarket for really inexpensive, and uh, so that's what we're gonna run with. And then in, in order to heat treat it, we're actually just gonna make a small little campfire, which after enough time will actually give you enough heat to heat treat. So let's get right into it and start drawing up our profile on this blade and cutting it out with the angle grinder. These are extra brushes. Keep these in case the brushes go bad on this. Why? Why? Why do they have to put the sticker on the threads? Safety glasses, very important. Okay, so I have what I would call a rough profile cut out now. Um, now I'm going to switch wheels from this cutting wheel to one of these flap discs. And we're going to use the flap disc to get in there and profile this thing out so that it's a little closer to the final shape.
So now that we've got our profile kind of roughed out, there's a, a pretty bad burr on the back side because of the way that grinding disc was, uh, was cutting. But I don't want to go and, and chamfer that burr because I want a nice square edge. So that's where the file will come in handy. And you can just go over and really use the flat side of the file to just take that burr down. We want to make sure that it's as straight as it can be. But since this is pretty flexible, because this steel is very, very thin, um, we shouldn't have a hard time straightening it out. And then hopefully once we heat treat it, it firms up a little bit. So now that we have our profile done, we have to grind in our bevels. Um, I have this center line on there that I kind of used to lay out the shape of the knife, but we don't want to use that. We're going to flip it over to the other side. And now we're basically going to like mark out where I want my handle to end. So that's going to be my blade. And I can more or less mark out where I want my bevel to go up to. That's going to be a little high on a knife this thin, so I'll probably wind up somewhere down there. Um, so it's going to be kind of a short bevel, but again, this blade, this steel is very, very thin. So I don't want to go too crazy, take away too much material. Now actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the edge with this Sharpie. And I'm going to break into our uh, thing of drill bits here. And we're going to use one of these drill bits to actually mark the center. Now, basically, I need to find a drill bit that's close to the thickness of this material. Um, and this material is probably, it's about a sixteenth of an inch thick. Which is normally what I would use for like a, kind of like a kitchen style knife. I use sixteenth inch thick blade stock, yeah. So sixteenth inch thick is how thick this is. Now on the tip of this drill bit, there's a little point and it's in the exact center of this bit. So we can use that and the flat reference surface of our table to actually scribe in the center of this blade by holding the drill bit in place and then dragging the knife across it. And that's going to give us a little scribe line down directly down the center. Now, if it's if the if the drill bit is slightly different in thickness than the blade, if you flip the blade over and do it from both sides, you'll wind up with two lines that are almost touching, and then you can use those two lines as your reference for the center. Now again, this material is very, very thin. It's gonna be a little hard to see on camera, I'll bring it as tight as I can. You can just see that little scribe line in the center. Now it's gonna be important to try and stay to the center line in order to keep the bevel even, but you know, again, super thin, not too much I can do if I go past it, but we're going to do our best to grind in these bevels in a way that leaves us right at that center line. And there's plenty of meat behind that edge so that we don't have an issue where the edge just chips off. Now, in order to grind in these bevels, I know you're probably thinking that you need a belt grinder. It's not necessarily true. You can absolutely do it with the flap disc and we're going to use the table as our, as our surface. We're going to clamp in the knife like this and we're just going to grind away and we're going to lean down and look and figure out when we get close to that center line and then flip it over and do the other side. A good trick for doing this is take a sharpie and color off the whole side of the blade so you know exactly where you're grinding as you're doing it. Now, I'm trying to keep my bevel, I want it as high as I can so I have a nice tapered bevel, but I also want to make sure that I don't grind too much off that edge, which I'm already getting kind of close to the center, I want to pull that bevel up.
So I burned the edge a little bit over there, but that should be okay because this blade has not yet been heat treated, so it's still very soft. But I was able to bring both of my bevels down to a point where from here, after we harden this steel, I can then push them a little bit further with basically hand sanding uh, in order to get us to an edge that we can actually use. We got our bevels ground in, and now we want to drill the holes for the pins. Problem is, this is hardened to a point because this was a saw blade, so we're going to actually have to anneal this um, using some heat and get it soft, then drill our holes, um, and then we'll actually go and fully heat treat it. So we're going to just do a little tiny fire outside, get it in there, let it get red hot, and then uh, it'll be soft so that we can drill it. So I wasn't able to get it red hot because I didn't dig a deep enough pit, but it's definitely softer than it was. I can tell because I'm able to bend it now. So I'm going to drill two holes and mark them out on here, one there and one there. Drill two holes and then we'll go actually and really heat treat it and get it super hard so that we can use it. Okay, I'm going to chase up this drill to the largest size that I have, which I might have just been using, no. to the largest size that I have because the pins I have are pretty big. So now that this is drilled out, the blade is relatively soft. We're going to go outside and do another little campfire, but this time we're going to dig it into the ground so it can get nice and hot and really uh, get this thing up to critical temperature so we can quench it. The only other thing that you need for this whole thing is some vegetable oil and these little aluminum tins. Um, All together, these two things cost me like five bucks at the grocery store. This was four dollars and these were a dollar. So this is what we're going to quench in once we get this thing red hot and non-magnetic in the campfire. Let's go back outside. actually be doing it. Yep. Alright. It's getting hot. Yep. Alright, almost at the almost there. Just gotta get a little let it get a little bit hotter. Okay, so now the knife has been quenched in oil. It's very hard and very brittle. Um, it was a little difficult to get it all hot, so I basically just heat treated the blade section of it, which will be fine. The knife will have some flexibility to it. Now we're going to need to temper it back, and we're going to do that in a little toaster oven. You could either do it in a toaster oven or just a regular like cooking oven. And since we use the vegetable oil, the fumes that come off of this as the oil burns off won't be horrible to breathe, and they won't stink up like your whole house. But what I want to do before we put that in the oven is I want to trace out the scales that we're going to be making onto the maple from the dolly so that I have something to do while this is sitting. This is going to be in the oven for two hours. Uh, it's going to be two one-hour cycles at 400 degrees. So what I'm going to do now is just trace out 
kind of the, the rough shape of the material that I'm going to use off of this dolly. And that's going to give me something to do cutting these out and getting them down to a manageable size while this thing is heating up. I'm going to set this oven to 450 degrees because a lot of times these have a hard time getting up to that temperature. So usually you have to set it a little bit past the temperature you're shooting for. And I'm going to let this be in here for one hour. It's on the highest settings and I'm just going to leave this alone and start working on the scales. All right, so now while that's cooking up in the oven, we're really going to go out of bounds with this one. We're going to use the angle grinder because we have limited tools to cut these out. We're going to get them rough, just basically cut out these shapes. And then once the knife is done, we're going to clamp these to it and drill the holes for the pins. But in the meantime, we can at least cut that out and smoke up the shop a little bit. A handsaw would be better, but it wasn't in the budget. So I'm sure there are people that are very upset that I just cut up this dolly, but there's a lot of usable stuff on this dolly still. You could take these wheels off. You could use this maple for other knife, knife scales. If you just peel this carpet off, there's more maple underneath it. So I always thought these dollies were a little bit too small to be useful for anything anyway. So if you unbolt these wheels and use them on a, you know, like a bigger scale or on a rolling cart, you can actually get a lot of use out of this dolly and it doesn't go to waste. And we got two perfectly good maple scales out of it. Okay, <clears throat> it's been an hour on the second cycle, and you can see the knife has changed colors a little bit. It's gotten to a straw color. Um, that's what we're looking for. That's going to allow the, the blade to temper back to the proper hardness, probably around like 56, 57 Rockwell. So now that it's done, we can pull it out and kind of clean this scale off with the sandpaper and then work on it from there. It's still a little warm. I want to clean this scale off. So actually what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use these scales that we're eventually going to cut down as little sanding blocks and I'm going to set up one of my clamps to hold on to the knife and then use this one as a sanding block to kind of get the knife nice and clean before we cut up these scales. I'm going to use a little bit of water as a lubricant, see if that helps. Even though this isn't stainless and this isn't wet dry sandpaper, eh, give it a shot. Okay, that's better. Nice. All right. So I've got the blade, you know, pretty well sanded. Um, it's not perfect, but whatever. We're not going for perfect. And uh, now we're going to work on the scale. So. For the scales, the reason I didn't drill these holes is because I actually want to use the blade as a reference to drill the holes in the exact right spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the scales clamped to the knife and then I'm going to drill straight through the knife, straight through the scales, and we'll see where we wind up. So now we're going to drill right through the scales, right through the blade, and they'll perfectly register and then we can grind this stuff away. The other component to this whole assembly is the, the pins for the handle. Now, I couldn't find any pins at Harbor Freight that were reasonably priced, so I bought these wooden dowels in all sorts of assorted sizes, and we're just going to have to figure out which ones of these are going to fit right in the holes we drilled, and it looks like we did. So these are going to be probably a pretty tight friction fit, but that's okay. They'll be nice and strong, and we're also going to glue these scales on with epoxy, but we're going to shape them a little bit before we glue them on. We're going to want to rough profile the scales basically just on the top because the rest we're going to grind um, we're going to grind once it's actually glued to the knife. So I like to mark both sides of my scales and then translate that drawing 
onto the wood and then grind them both while this is clamped together. So we're going to clamp this to the table. We're actually just going to use the flap disc um, to get closer to that edge and then just grind that material away. So now we're going to take the flap disc on the grinder and we're going to grind away some of this to try and get us closer to that rounded nose profile on the top. And here we have the most ergonomic knife you've ever seen. Time to get to grinding on this thing. Okay, so I kind of did some rough profiling on here. You can see they're super uneven and this is all very rough, but that's okay um, because there's still plenty to do. Now what I want to do is take the scales off the knife and put them together again where I can profile them as one and I can work on this top section because this top section here I'm not going to be able to touch once these are glued together. So I'm going to clamp these onto the table probably like this and I'm going to work this top section and get it nice and round and get it right to where I want it to be and then I'm going to actually glue these scales to this and then finish them on the knife. All right, so I've profiled the top here now, and now I can basically glue these scales on and uh, go from there. So I'm using this quick setting epoxy, also obviously from Harbor Freight. It's two part, um, it's a one to one mix, and I'm just gonna use the back of this as my sort of mixing area. Now before we do that, I wanna make sure that I know which side my scales are gonna go on. Obviously on this, it's pretty obvious. I want to get my pins sort of ready to go, have my hammer nearby, and I also want to make sure I get some of the dust off of this knife because it's going to be hard for the epoxy to stick to it if it's all dusty and dirty. So I'm just going to take a little piece of paper towel and clean that off. Um, and then I'm also going to take a little bit of sandpaper and just scuff up where this scale is a little bit where I didn't sand. Just help give the epoxy a little bit of a place to grip. We can mix this up. A trick when mixing two-part epoxy, instead of making a puddle of epoxy, draw a line with the epoxy and then if you draw two lines that are the same length, you know that you put the same of both part. Instead of trying to guess, you know, like a puddle, sometimes it can be hard to tell how much you put down. So you put two lines that are the same and then you can mix them up. I'm going to use one of these other little dowels that I bought as a little mixing stick because I definitely don't need all 36 of them. And I'm going to use the I'm going to use both of the clamps now to clamp this. And now it's important that I don't get the epoxy too high 
up on the blade because if I go too high, then I'm not going to be able to I'm not going to be able to uh, get rid of that squeeze out very easily. I do have some water standing by, so I can use that, or I could use sort of any sort of cleaner. Um, I got to make sure I get some of this sharpie off that I left on there, and we can spread this epoxy on. And this stuff definitely sets up fast. I can feel how tacky it already is. I'm not worried about the epoxy squeezing out the back or the sides because I know I'm going to be able to, to get to it and just grind it down if I want to later, make everything nice and, nice and smooth. So I got both my pins in there. You can see the epoxy squeezing out the back. I'm just going to get a clamp on there, get one clamp on the bottom, and then get another one a little bit closer to the top. I know what you're thinking, this thing looks really chunky, but don't worry, once this epoxy sets up in a couple minutes, we're going to grind it all out and make it look all nice and slim and really nice. Okay, so I decided to give this a full 24 hours to cure because my shop's pretty cold, it's like, a, like about 50 degrees in here. So now that it's all cured up, I can go ahead and go back to the angle grinder and get these scales down to a more reasonable size and really clean this thing up and make it look nice. So let's get to it. I found these two little pieces of scrap wood in my trash and I'm just gonna use these to make myself kind of a, a rudimentary little knife vise, which is gonna allow me to work on these scales without uh, having to flip it over. I wanna be able to see what I'm doing Okay, so we've got our knife. Um, the scales I decided to taper down and you know you could push these further. Obviously I only bought 150 grit sandpaper to keep the budget down but obviously you would want to push this up and you'd want to sand it up to a higher grit. But for now, I mean, this is a more or less a functioning little knife. The last thing we would want to do is sharpen it. And for that, I picked up this little guy. Um, I don't know if this will necessarily have enough of a bevel on it to sharpen. If it doesn't, maybe I'll go back with that 150 grit paper and put a little micro bevel on it. But let's see if we can get anything out of this. This is just a ceramic uh, little sharpener, kind of like a kitchen style. But... putting a little bevel on there. Oh yeah, it's getting sharp down here. Anything? <laughs> I left the, uh, the tip a little bit too fat for this thing to get to it, so I'll just take a little bit of the 150 grit and maybe I'll use this, I'll use the wrench as my, uh, as my, my edge and I'll just kind of add a little micro bevel to that so that this thing can actually do its job. Something else you can do is you can also 
lightly strop a knife with cardboard because there's a little bit of abrasive in cardboard. that's pretty good. All right, so that about does it for this project. Um, listen, this knife is not going to win any awards. You know, it's the blade steel's a little too thin, the handle scales are not ideal, but the point is for a hundred bucks, you can get yourself started with knife making. Um, I started making knives like five or six years ago. I've made a lot since then, and I have learned a tremendous amount from the knife making process. I encourage everyone to try it at least once. You know, this setup is not perfect. Um, you could spend a little bit more money and buy yourself one of the 1x30 belt grinders, which would save you a ton of time. You could buy some actual knife steel online, which would also be way better than cutting up the circular saw blade. But I just want people to feel like they can get their hands dirty and get started and not be intimidated by the cost that you see when you watch other knife makers online. So the other thing you have to remember too is that the $100 that you just spent, the only thing that you really consumed from that $100 investment is half of the circular saw blade. So really all the rest of these tools, you know, aside from the saw blade and maybe the sandpaper because we used it up, you know, they're all still very, very useful. So you're not, you're not throwing away that $100, you're investing in yourself, uh, in both the knowledge and, you know, the, the tools that you have now to work on future projects. If you try this and you hate it, you could sell all the tools online. You know, just sell them used. You could probably make back half your money. I really encourage you to try this out. Um, try making a knife just to get the experience of working with both wood and metal. Make something that you can use. You will be surprised how good it feels to actually use a knife that you made by hand, either in your kitchen or out on like a camping trip. So again, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please like it and share it with your friends, show it around um, and help me spread this sort of knowledge around with other people. That's why I'm here. Again, I'm Chris Zepp for Make Everything. You can follow me on Instagram at Make Everything Shop and on my website, I sell different merchandise like hats and uh, t-shirts and stuff like that. So again, I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. Leave comments down below if you have questions. I would love to answer them and point you in the right direction for the knowledge uh, in order to make stuff like this. So again, thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you on the next video.